Bleacher Report put out an article uh, titled Defensive Players Ready to Become Stars in 2023. And it was on my home feed for the Lions. And I'm like, well, usually when they do that, that means the Lions, a Lions player is going to be on it. But who's set to become a star? Like, is it going to be Rodriguez? Is it going to be Houston? Is it going to be Hutchinson? He kind of already played like a star last year. So like, where are they going with this? So without further ado, let me show you who it's going to be. Then we're going to talk about um, why it is. And we're going to look even deeper to see if they're right. And I'm going to make the argument that it's not that he's set to become a star. He already is one. Um, and that player is none other than our newest corner. Well, not newest, but one of our newest corners, Cam Sutton. And uh, here you see him with the Pittsburgh Steelers jersey on. And it goes on to talk about some of the things we already know. Um, talks about how bad the Lions defense is. Once again, national analysts not understanding the flow of the season. And then it went to talk about the contract that we gave him three years, 33 million. Um, and here's what I love to see. Pittsburgh Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin made it clear he was sorry to see the 28-year-old go. Always coaches always talk about how they miss their players. But let's look at what he really said. He said, first of all, I always hesitate because the first thing I think about is his above the neck game, his maturity and his preparation. So why does he hesitate to say that? Those are really good things, right? Above the neck game, his maturity, his preparation. And he goes, but in stating that first, you're almost disrespectful to his talent. He's a talented guy. So basically what he's saying is, yes, he's uber talented and he's a talented quarterback, but his above the net game, his maturity, the intangibles that he brings to the game are elite. And I love hearing this because like the Steelers, dislike the Steelers, like Mike Tomlin, don't like Mike Tomlin. You cannot argue with the success that he's had and that he may be one of the top two or three greatest football minds in the game. He continued. He continued to say, but beyond that, I think the things that are his calling cards are his intellect and his prep, his communication skills. I just think it allows him to be versatile. He does a good job of getting people around him on the same page, and I'd imagine those skills that are going to travel. Okay, so sometimes we talk about this, and we talk about how players, you can get them in free agency, and all of a sudden they're not playing as well for their new team as they did their old team, because maybe they're not, and they don't have a skill set that's good for the scheme that's being run, or maybe they're being asked to do something different. But Tomlin here is saying exactly what I think about Sutton. It's here. The best part of his game is here. He's played the slot. He's played on the boundary outside, right? He's played these different positions. He's proven that he can do it all because he's got a brain. He has got a good, good brain. They went on to say Jeff Okuda may have the draft pedigree, but Sutton is the best cornerback on the team. He's capable of playing the boundary of the slot, and he has allowed less than 48% of the passes thrown his direction to be completed. Pass rating of just 65.9. 48% of the passes completed. That is unbelievably good. So let's go on a little bit of a deeper dive just to how good he was. Um, last year. And to do that, I, I sometimes like to look at the PFF stats that somebody's putting up. So here we have Cam Sutton. He stands 5'11", 188. Not a huge guy. Not a huge guy. And uh, we like those Tennessee volunteers, don't we? In our, in our, <laughs> anyways, uh, he's from Tennessee. Um, he had three interceptions. Um, he allowed only 36 receptions on 71 targets and here are his grades from last year. Overall, his run defense, pass defense, like we can't even, nobody even cares about pass rush. And the coverage grade of 70.4, all in the green, all good. And you can see here when I pull it out that he, honest to goodness, especially when it comes to his coverage grade or overall defense, actually plays with quite a bit of consistency. He actually plays with quite a bit of consistency. If you would have shown me a corner for the Detroit Lions – that was playing consistently in the yellow to green, man, I would have been happy. <laughs> I would have been really, really happy in that. And I know PFF grades aren't perfect. 
they aren't perfect. So what we have to know and what we can look at that are obvious is 48% completion percentage against when throwing his way. That is huge. And he allowed, I believe, under 44 yards per game. That is not something that you can argue with. You can argue with the PFF grade. You can't argue with that. So Cam Sutton, how high are you on this guy? And I've been struggling trying to decide what I think. Do I think that he can be a top 10 corner in the league? Or do I think like, yeah, he's just a good starting corner. And he's a guy that is suitable at one as your best corner, but maybe he should be a CB two. I don't know. And I'm kind of in between, but I definitely continue to lean more and more toward he can be a top 10, 15 corner in this league and be a quality um, number one corner. And maybe that is his role going forward. Maybe we're going to take a corner with the number six pick. And in, as he gets a little bit older in his second and third year of the contract, maybe they're both kind of like option one, a one B as your outside corners, maybe him and Christian Gonzalez, something like that. I don't know. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, this was a good signing and the money's not insane. I would rather pay this than pay Dean um, from the Bucks 15 million, 16, 17 million a year. I I really would. I would much rather pay him this than pay um, big play Slay, even older, aging even more, 20 million a year. Like I think the Eagles had to do. I don't know his exact contract, but this is a good pickup. And when you put a quality safety, and I have thoughts on where CJ Gardner Johnson is going to play. And I believe he's going to play more at safety and I can pick up a lot of these things. And this is probably another video, but um, I think he's going to play more safety than he is nickel. And I think that's because we have a lot of corner talent, but also just the way Dan Campbell's talked about it, the way he's talked about it when they're doing interviews, they refer to him in his positioning on the field as a safety. So I really do think when you have that help behind you and you have uh, Emmanuel Mosley on the other side, like he is going to last year, he was very good on a Pittsburgh defense. That secondary was not good. It was not good. The secondary is undoubtedly better in Detroit, which is crazy to think about. I'm not saying it was last year, but with Cam Sutton, with Mosley, with CJ Gardner, Johnson, with Tracy Walker, with Kirby Joseph, there are proven commodities that are in that defense. Um, and notice how I didn't even say Jerry Jacobs. I didn't even say Jeff Okuda. There are proven commodities because they're not, <laughs> but um, especially Okuda, not proven. Uh, we know what Jacobs is for the most part, which is a gritty baller. Um, so I think like, just as you look at these things, um, he's going to be better. And that's why they say he's going to be a future star. I'm excited to see it. And I hope they are correct. Hey, if you think he's going to be hit a comment below, tell me you agree that you love this guy. You love the signing. If you don't think he's going to be a future star, tell me why, like, let us know with some good arguments as to like things that you found that I haven't uncovered yet. Don't just say he's small, okay, because it didn't hurt him last year. All right, hit that subscribe button on your way to those comments, and we'll see you on the next one.